Welcome to another Diacom information session. This session is brought to you by Rinda Technologies and covers features of the Diacom Marine Diagnostic Software. These sessions are designed to give you a better understanding of the operation of the Diacom software. Thank you for watching. In this session, we will cover making a data recording, opening and viewing a previous recording, and emailing a recording to someone else for viewing. To make a recording, you must be connected to an engine. Connecting to an engine is covered in another video. So we choose System Type. Choose the engine we want to talk to and choose the data set we wish to view. The last step in connecting to an engine is to click on the communicate with ECM button to begin gathering data. The bottom right of the screen shows that you are linked to the engine and gathering data. The clock at the bottom right also indicates that you're linked to the engine and gathering data. Each time this clock advances, new data has been acquired from the engine control module. This data comes in packets. A packet is one read of all the parameters on the screen. In this case, Diacom is acquiring approximately 10 packets per second. Diacom has a built-in 512 packet buffer. So as soon as you link to an engine, the buffer starts filling with engine data. On this engine, data is being received approximately 10 packets per second. So it will take approximately 52 seconds to fill the buffer. Once the buffer is full, new information continues into the buffer with the oldest information falling out. This is done on a one-to-one -one basis, meaning that as one new packet comes in, the oldest packet falls out so that the latest 512 packets are constantly stored in the buffer. So for this engine, roughly the last 52 seconds of engine information are stored in the buffer. All recording is done from the ECM data tab, and while making a recording, no other tab is accessible. There are several different methods to make a recording. The simplest method is to turn the engine ignition switch on, connect Diacom to the engine, and press the record button. Then start the engine and let the recording run for the entire engine run cycle. Anytime Diacom is recording, there is an elapsed time timer that is displayed on the screen. This timer can be moved to any location on the screen by clicking and dragging it to the desired location. Now, once the engine problem occurs, wait 10 seconds or so and then push the stop recording button. Diacom then rereads fault codes, freeze frames, and extended freeze frames and stores them in the recording. The Save Recording dialog now appears so that the recording can be saved to your hard drive. The default name for recording consists of the engine manufacturer name, the engine type, and then a date timestamp based on the Windows clock in your laptop. If you change the name of the file, ensure that you leave the .rec file extension at the end. Diacom will need this file extension to find and open the file later. Click the OK button to save. Using this method you capture the entire run cycle, however long it is, and when the recording is viewed later, you know that the problem is located near the end of the recording. An alternative method for making a recording is to turn the ignition switch on, connect Diacom to the engine, but do not start a recording. Start the engine and go drive the boat until the problem occurs. 
if you have been connected to the engine long enough for the buffer to fill before the problem occurs, then you already have the last 512 packets of engine run history in the buffer. When the problem occurs, press the Start Recording button. Let the recording run for 15 to 20 seconds and then push the Stop Recording button. Save the recording as you did before. This recording will only be approximately one to one and a half minutes long and when the recording is viewed later, you know that the problem occurred just before the start recording button was pushed. To view a previously recorded event, stop communicating with the engine control module click on Open a Recorded Data File button, choose the recording you wish to open and click the Open button. Once the recording opens, the Recorded Data Explorer bar appears. The Recorded Data Explorer bar is the control panel for the replaying of the recording. It can be closed by clicking on the X in the upper right hand corner and it can be restored by clicking on Tools and Recorded Data Explorer from the menu bar. The Recorded Data Explorer bar can be moved anywhere on the screen by clicking on the title bar and dragging it to a new location. The Recorded Data Explorer bar contains the recording timeline. This timeline shows how long the recording is in packets and has a slide bar that can be moved to scroll through the recording. The slide bar can be moved by either clicking on it and dragging it clicking on it and using the left right arrow keys which will scroll one packet at a time left arrow to the left right arrow to the right or by clicking on the slide bar and then using the page up or page down buttons which will scroll you five packets at a time page up scrolling you to the left five packets at a time page down scrolling you five packets to the right at a time. The portion of the timeline in red with negative packet numbers represents data that was put in the recording from the buffer. This is data gathered before the start recording button was pressed. The green portion of the timeline represents data that was put in the recording after the start recording button was pressed. The vertical white line is the current position of the slide bar on the timeline and the trigger point is the black line between the red and green areas of the timeline. This trigger point is the point where the start recording button was pressed. It is always at packet zero. The Recorded Data Explorer bar has a play button for playing the recording and a speed control scroll for controlling playback speed. The speed control sets the amount of pause time between packets during playback and can be adjusted between one millisecond and 1000 milliseconds. The default playback speed has a 10 millisecond pause between packets. Click the play button to start or stop the playback of the recording on the screen. All data contained in the recording can be viewed on the ECM data tab in digital format. The recording can also be displayed on the graph tab with up to three parameters being graphed at a time.
we'll click the zoom out button to get a maximum view of time on the timeline. When viewing a recording, the ECM data tab data and the graph tab data are synchronized on the timeline. This means that the packet of data that is being viewed on the ECM data tab is the same packet displayed by the vertical green cursor on the graph tab. Clicking on the graph line places the cursor at that point. Note, the vertical green cursor is not visible on the graph when it is located at either end of the graph. On the graph tab, you can also scroll through the recording by either dragging the slide bar or pressing the play button. If you want someone else that has Diacom to look at your recording, you can email it to them. The easiest way to do this from inside the Diacom program is to click on the ECM data tab and then click open a recorded data file button. Once the open file window is opened, right click on the recording you wish to email. Hover over send to, hover over mail recipient, and click. This will open up a blank email with the file attached to the email. Address the email, write a subject on the subject line, add a note, and then click send. This email process assumes that you have an email client on that PC and that you have internet access. If you use internet mail, the process of finding and attaching the file will have to be done manually in your internet browser. Thank you for watching this edition of Rinda Technologies Diacom Marine Diagnostic Software Training.